hypervolemia. In this video, we're going to explore the fluid imbalance of hypervolemia. Remember, when you see hyper, we are speaking of a higher than normal value. Hypervolemia is basically the gain of water and electrolytes in the intravascular fluid or blood. This excess fluid can cause a buildup in spaces where there is usually not extra fluid, including the legs and arms, which is called peripheral edema. It can also accumulate in the abdomen, which is called ascites, and potentially the lungs, which is called pulmonary edema. Hypervolemia could be caused by an overingestion of sodium and fluid, eating a diet high in salt, administration of IV fluids with high concentration of solutes, like sodium chloride, potassium chloride, and glucose. It could also be caused by impaired fluid balance regulations by the body organs, for example, heart failure, due to the heart's inability to circulate the fluid properly, causing a buildup of fluid. Renal failure can be another cause, due to the inability of the kidneys to filter the blood, again causing a buildup of fluid. And also liver failure, which is caused by two different reasons. First, it is caused by the effect of liver sending signals to the kidneys to retain excess salt and water, which accumulates in the tissues increasing the blood volume. And second, the liver's inability to produce enough of the protein albumin, which is the main protein in the blood that maintains stable blood volume. Signs and symptoms. Signs and symptoms of hypovolemia can be seen many different ways. We will start with the vital signs. In the vital signs, you can see tachycardia, a bounding pulse, hypertension, tachypnea, and increased central venous pressure. In the neurologic system, you can see confusion, changes in mental status, and lethargy. In the respiratory system, you can see increased breathing rate, shallow respirations, dyspnea, orthnea, crackles, and diminished breath sounds. In the gastrointestinal system, you can see weight gain and ascites. Other signs and symptoms could include dependent edema, distended neck veins, and cool pale skin. Laboratory results could include a decreased hematocrit, decreased serum osmolarity, decreased urine-specific gravity, and decreased serum sodium. The nursing management and considerations could include monitoring the daily weight and vital signs, especially the blood pressure and the pulse. The pulse could be a normal rate, however, it could feel very strong. Nurses could also assess for edema, which includes checking the extremities, the abdomen, and the lungs for signs of extra fluid volume. Assessing the breath sounds, nurses can listen for crackles and wheezes. You can also monitor the fluid intake and output. Monitor laboratory findings, including increased BUN and creatinine levels, which are indicating renal impairment. Also check the BNP level, which can suggest heart failure. Also check AST and ALT, which are related to liver function. Nurses can also monitor level of consciousness and maintain client safety. You can also place your patient in Fowler's position, which means sitting to assist in breathing in the event that there's fluid in the lungs. You can also administer diuretics as ordered, including Lasix, Aldactone, and Bumex, and restrict fluid intake if necessary. Also, restrictions in dietary sodium is also good and implementing measures to prevent skin breakdown due to excess fluids pooling in the extremities which can decrease blood flow to that area causing slow healing. Nurses can also support the arms and legs to decrease dependent edema as appropriate and watch for critical complications such as pulmonary edema which is fluid accumulation in the lungs which collects in the air sacs making it difficult to breathe. It leads to impaired gas exchange and may cause respiratory failure. Now let's go over some NCLEX style questions so that you can gain further understanding. Question number one. The nurse describes the signs and symptoms of having fluid volume excess that needs immediate attention of the physician. The following are correct signs and symptoms of fluid volume excess except A. Pressure felt on the diaphragm B. A weight gain of 2 pounds per day C. Shortness of breath or D. None of the above. So let's discuss these answer options one by one. In option A, pressure felt on the diaphragm, this could definitely be a possibility, especially in the case of ascites, which is a buildup of fluid in the abdominal space, making this answer option correct. 
And the next option, option B, a weight gain of two pounds per day, this could most definitely be a sign of fluid volume overload. This is why it is especially important to teach your patients the importance of weighing themselves daily. And option C, shortness of breath, in severe cases of fluid volume overload, the fluid could build up in the lungs or pleural space. This condition is called pleural edema. Since all of these options are correct, D, none of the above, cannot be right, making option D wrong and therefore the correct answer. Question number two. Which of the following are signs and symptoms of fluid volume excess? Select all that apply. A, decreased blood pressure. B, edema. C, distended neck veins. D, crackles. E, bradycardia. Or F, shortness of breath. In select all that apply questions, you have to view each answer option one by one. In the first option, option A, a decreased blood pressure, in the case of hypervolemia, this would not be a sign or symptom because you would actually expect the opposite, elevated blood pressure. In option B, edema, this could most definitely be a sign as extra fluid in the system could leak into the extremities causing third spacing syndrome. So this answer option is correct. In option C, distended neck veins, when there is an overload of fluid in the blood, the blood vessels can become in a sense full. Therefore, you could indeed see distended neck veins. In option D, crackles, whenever you see the word crackles, they are usually referring to the lungs. And one sign that there is extra fluid in the lungs is a crackling sound that is heard upon auscultation with a stethoscope, making this answer option also correct. Option E, bradycardia. Bradycardia is not seen in hypervolemia. It is possible to see tachycardia though, from the heart trying to pump all of the extra fluid. And finally, answer option F, as discussed before, with hypervolemia, fluid can build up in spaces where they should not be, including the lungs. Making the final and correct answer options B, C, D, and F because all of these can be noted in fluid volume excess.